guys and welcome back to La Cancha and as you hear the song you possibly think about Spanish football and Spanish football right now is going through a bit of a crisis off the field and no club embodies this crisis like Barcelona and there are a lot to talk about with Barcelona Oscar um, where do you want to start with Gavi with Real Madrid coming out against Barcelona the big path of path between Florentino and uh, Laporta is officially over Thank God for that. <laughs> Honestly, Lopata and Florentino being body body has just made has been making me sick since the Super League. So if that's over, I thank God for that. With Gavi and honestly, all the off the pitch stuff with Barcelona at this point is just draining my energy. So I'll be honest with everyone. I don't want to talk about it, but we have to. So yeah. you're welcome. Anyway, with Gavi. What I understand, because it's very confusing, what I understand is that we filed the application to like the like to say hey we we are actually allowed to register this guy. We apparently filed it late. But then I'm also hearing understanding that the reason we filed it late is because of the leak. Now, whatever the case, if this doesn't get resolved, then Gavi will be a free agent unless we register him as a free agent, like we did with Dembele and Roberto this summer. Yeah, I guess the, the thing with the Gavi situation is that with what happens generally in, in the Twitter world and with fans in general is that a lot of people don't have that much information about what's actually going on and that yeah. like Gavi can still play for the rest of the season. It's just going to play as a B-teamer. Right, and I do think Barcelona will be able to register him. They might need to do a bit of financial um, shenanigans, but I, I think this is what happens when you have a club like Barcelona who, in their situation, and they're going to war on too many fronts, given what we know about Barcelona in terms of finances, in terms of where they come from. Like, there's also the legal case with an. Uh, the referee, the referee that, the, or the vice president of the referees that they, they paid allegedly or realistically for 17 years, what they paid for, we don't know. But it's, it's just like they're fighting on so many fronts. And and I'll, I'll take that to the rest of Spanish football because it's, I'll say this season has been one of the most, uh, it, it's had dark clouds over it. Not necessarily for what's going on on the pitch, but off the pitch, there's been so much chaos in terms of Barca and Madrid fighting the league in terms of the sports law, which is like all this years ago. You have rumors about like this organization might not support the league anymore. You have the Barcelona situation. You have the referees. You have the VAR. It's it's a mess every week. You know, like every week you go in to watch it, and off the field things are create puts in a cloud on what's going on on the field. Exactly. I think what you just said now has kind of explained why I am enjoying f- football less recently because one, it's not even the main topic anymore. So with all the and a lot of these like topics of controversy and dark clouds are stuff that if we're all being honest with ourselves, we don't know that much about. Some people like to act as if, hey, we've seen this little bit of in quotes evidence. So this is this means this and that means that like no no one knows anything, only the like people involved know something and all that and maybe the people that are really investigating this. So yeah. with all of these things coming up, obviously being on Twitter doesn't help. So I'm on there less right now. Yeah, yeah honestly, it's a seriously unwelcome distraction. No, it is, but we have to be honest. Like there, it does look improper. It should be investigated, but. And I do think if Barca is found guilty, there should be harsh punishments. But at the moment, we don't know. No one knows whether they'll be guilty or not. No one knows whether mm-hmm. um, the payments were to influence games. Yeah. Because we all know, you're a Barcelona fan, you know that your club sometimes can be brain dead <laughs> in terms of how they do business. Because yeah. so. if you are to ask me, I don't think this is a corruption case. I think it's a stupidity case where the club is doing something to make them... Like, I feel 
Barcelona right now, they're, they, they're fighting to prove that they're innocent. They're not fighting over, you, you, you know, like, not at least innocent or to proving guilty. Yeah. Barcelona, in the, in the court of public opinion, you're, you're guilty on to proving innocent. That's the problem. Because even if they are innocent, because it's in the court of public opinion right now, people are going to obviously have their opinions biased for and against Barcelona. So this whole thing is just a stain and a mess that won't really go away. Yeah, it won't really go away. And hopefully, like, for Spanish football, this can be resolved soon and we can resolve all the other... Because it seems like every week there's one crisis waiting to happen. So, But, like, let's hope things get better. On the field, though, things are really good for Barcelona. Rafinha, I criticize them a lot, but like he's been making me shot. Like yeah, that. I've criticized him. Well, to be fair, I think someone during the World Cup we talked about him, and I think Mikhail back then was like, you know, this is the kind of player that you should give time because he's coming to a new league and playing for Leeds versus playing for Barcelona is different. And I'll be honest, I'm not, still not fully bought into Rafinha yet. He still has those moments where he fails to take on the player or just makes a completely strange decision. But that's just me being realistic. Also being, real, being realistic is that he's improving as the weeks go by. You know, he's scoring clutch goals since that's the word that he's on Twitter. <laughs> Uh, his performances have generally been improving. It's just that, yes, yeah, still the odd moment that really irritates me. And I'll be fair, it's not just him. Every Barcelona forward is guilty of that odd moment of pure frustration that just, you know, keeps us from scoring more than one goal. <laughs> <laughs> is, this, is it for a opinion? Is it just a case of Usman Dembele being out? And Usman Dembele was like one of the best players in the league when he got injured and mm-hmm. now with him now Rafinha has been able to shine and he's been able to make that right wing spot for his own. Yeah, because back then when Dembele was injured, I believe I was like Rafinha's and the other have to step up and it's been very important that Rafinha has stepped up because Lewandowski has kind, his form has kind of dropped up since the World Cup plus he's been injured and suspended a lot so Rafinha's goals, his assists, especially this year, have been really important. I think he's definitely our top scorer this year. I don't know if he's the top scorer for all of the teams. Yeah. And and with, with Lewandowski though, like it's beginning to worry like the rest of world football because he's gone through he's been going through a drought recently, as you rightly mentioned. And even in the Pichichi, I look at it again, it's like so many strikers are close to catching up on him. Whether they do, it might be a mystery. But are you worried knowing what's coming next? Or maybe less because there's going to be an international break. But like the next game is obviously a really big one. Because if Barca wins it, we, we don't have a title race anymore. It's Barca is going to win the title. Mm, but yeah. if they lose it, we have a pretense of a little title race. Yeah. Mm. Well, you could make the argument that he misses them, Billy. Because... Him coming back into the team from suspension, he came back to find a team that didn't have Dembele and he and Dembele work well together. So that could possibly be it. But I don't think he's like... I think with him, it's more like... He hasn't really found the proper chemistry with any other forward besides Dembele because sometimes he's always berating Ansu Fati or Ferran for not like making a movement he wants them to make that kind of thing yeah and he, he really had to go for a run this weekend yeah I, I feel these kind of things come with time also besides that I feel like whatever I feel like he, he he's one of those players that the World Cup has affected negatively so hopefully this international break probably resets everything back to normal yeah or you know he scores a hat trick on Sunday and we're like <laughs> Hey, who was talking about this guy being finished? <laughs> yeah, a big a big game player in quotation marks needs a big game big game step up, doesn't he? Uh, you yeah. spoke about international break affecting team uh, player, but like it's affected Athletic Club a lot because if we rewind back to before the international break, we we're talking about them as potentially finishing third, potentially being in top four. Mm-hmm. But since then, their performance. 
gone off a cliff. I'm going to start with the goal that they scored. I felt it was quite harsh because depending, it's, it's one of those things where the optical illusion can make you see a hand. If you look at the still images, it looks like a hand. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the video, I see it, I see a shoulder. And I do think that was a very, very harsh goal to take away from them, especially given the fact that De Jong was also at a high blip. But it's one of those things where it's like, if it's a goal, it's a very harsh decision. But they still have problems scoring at San Mamers. They haven't really done well at home this year. Yeah. With the with the goal, I feel is the problem of the law at this point. So uh, we don't have one to go talk out how the law should be rewritten to make some of these things fair. And with that kind of goal, remember we talked about this exact thing. I think last week, yeah, I forgot was, last week they made the same decision, that. but then the week before they made a different decision. So I'm like. Which one is the right decision? There's no consistency because people are interpreting a flawed law differently. Now back to Athletic Club. On private chat, you sent me a picture of the league table since March day eleven. Yeah. Can anyone guess where Athletic Club are? Can you drum roll? I'm about to say it. Oh yeah, one moment. Athletic Club since March day eleven. That was long. They are in 16th place in the table. If you, the table was to start on match day 11, yeah, that's that's terrible. The likes of Hetafe, Real Valladolid, and Cadiz are ahead of them. Girona are ahead of them on this match day table starting on the 11th. So yeah, like especially and especially at home, their form has just been terrible. On Sunday, to be fair to them, minus that disallowed goal, some brave defending and great saves prevent them from scoring. And some brain dead um, misses, like the miss of Nico Williams. Like I, I think he had a poor game. I, I like. Yeah, he, he he had a for a very talented player. He had a poor showing because he they they deliberately switched him to the side he didn't prefer just to get a Sergio Roberto, and he barely did anything to him. Went back to the left, couldn't get any change out of body, and then to top it all off, on top of like bad final balls, he missed that glorious chance. Yeah. yeah. And it was a fault for the first goal, too, because if you look at it, I'm not sure, <laughs> part of my rest is more here, but I, I think it's him. It could be his brother, but. Um... <laughs> 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 but but I, I, I do think it's I do think it's him. If I'm wrong, then it's like part of me, part of me. This will be the first time. It's on. Me, so I, I I've not looked at that goal since the last time since like yeah. seeing it like Yeah, but but I looked at it again t today and he's the one who doesn't mark Rafinha because Rafinha is like so free and he's the one that doesn't mark him and you can see when Rafinha gets the ball and he's running back and he's like, Man, it's too late, mate. So like he he had a four he had a four game. Yeah, it it was um it was you're right it was Nico. Yeah, see yeah. my my look at that Busquets dribble though. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah he he had a poor game. Athletic Club have just been poor since. I think is that in this season, right? Yeah. It's a it's a like first for a lot of people, so we can't exactly say why. Some people went into the World Cup and came out of it looking really different. Like us, we've we only scored one goal a game since the World Cup break. Some people have forgotten how to play football. Some people have become very, very good at football when they were totally hopeless before. <laughs> like honestly, I don't know. I'm just guessing maybe this normal international break coming on coming on might reset things back to normal. So who knows? Yeah, maybe, maybe we'll finally get 4 0 Barcelona back. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe the Clasico will change a lot of things. Speaking of the Clasico, Real Madrid, they beat another Barcelona team 3 uh, 1. Things were looking good for Espanyol. They started the game well. Hosselu scored a Galasso, but Real Madrid came back really strong. And Tramini has been criticized a bit, but like his assist for Militao's goal was so delicious. Yeah. His son has been watching Modric very closely in training. <laughs> It was a really good assist, and Militao is, you know, you can make a case he's been one of Real Madrid. He's 
been one of Real Madrid's best players this year. He's tripped him with a lot of important goals. Yeah, yeah, he's he's really grown into a strong a strong center back when he first came mm-hmm. in. Like he made so many mistakes, and he was to me it was almost like a joke. But like since last season, he's been so so reliable, so strong. Mm-hmm. He's always there when the team needs him, and he's chipping in when goals, as you said. So that's really good for Real Madrid. Yeah, because you remember, if you remember that season where both Varane and Ramos left, they were like, okay. Is Militao's fine form towards the end of the season just a purple patch or is it the real deal? And, you know, he's proving with Alaba, with Rudiger, with Nacho, it doesn't matter who you put it, him with. He's the main man in this Madrid defense. Yeah. But speaking of Madrid's attack, though, Karim Benzema was in, in the starting lineup for this game as well. Do you expect him to show up against Liverpool and Barcelona? I, I, I've seen pictures of him back in training and I hear all about Maji back too. So I expect him to... What I do, I rest him. I start him on the bench against the club because you really don't need him, especially with the good goal cushion you have. And only bring him on if maybe things are getting out of hand and then save him for Barcelona. to like, hopefully he's 100% from their point of view. And we really need that Benzema Lewandowski clash round two. But no, Lewandowski you... Benzema mid off. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, yeah. the star of the show is going to be a defender in midfield that the forwards are just. <laughs> I don't know, the forwards on both sides are up to do this. True, but Vinicius Jr. is chipping in with goals, Asensio is scoring goals as well. So maybe, maybe things might change. Yeah. Who knows? Anyway, you are saying something before. How do, how do you see it going though? This game because for Real Madrid, I'm sure they're in a bit. It's a big week for them. They're mm-hmm. possibly even more focused on the Champions League in terms of getting the job done because we don't want to underestimate Liverpool as you are, you might well know Oscar and say they can't come back. <laughs> but um, uh, after that, it's if they win this, they they still have a chance. It's a slight chance, like given what Barcelona is doing right now, it doesn't seem like anyone can beat them in the league. But they still have a chance, though. And how how do you see them just going after that? Do you think, like, where do you see them person Barcelona, although you're a Barcelona fan? It's funny because I can't... <laughs> you know what's funny? Yeah. I'm seriously trying to think of a weak point in our defense, and I can't think of any... <laughs> Yeah, it's right. a strange feeling. <laughs> the previous classic of this season, I was thinking of where they couldn't hurt us. <laughs> okay, but on a serious note, they need the way they can hurt us is by finding a different solution to play against us than they did against than they did at the Bernabeu because they were just trying the same thing and it didn't work. So I think. If they should play Sabarius in this game and just pin Chris and Modric, if you are to ask him. Yeah. Play Sabarius, Tremeni, and Federico Valverde and just see what that does. Because, you know, what you've been trying before has just not been working. Chris and Modric are still great players. Best midfielders in the world, don't get me wrong. But you need, you need something different. Because if you repeat the same mistake for the third time in a row, that's just playing stupidity. <laughs> but, but do you think the elements of not playing at the Bernabeu would affect Barcelona? Because Barcelona got away with being defensive because they were away from home. And at Camp Nou, the fans would expect them to go for blood. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. But then I was like, um, we, we played on a neutral venue. And I guess on a neutral venue, you kind of see... In a neutral venue, I'm on that, like... How do I say this in a way that makes sense? We played in Saudi Arabia the same way we play at Camp Nou, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And Arsenal are amazing in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, so I'm thinking the fact that they'll have more chances to counter us might not really change that much. Yeah. It's it's what they do. Honestly, I don't know. I feel the game might end up being a draw because both teams will find a way to cancel out each other and Ter Stegen can't keep performing miracles. So. Yeah, he can't. He can't. I, I think it will be a draw, but 
I would love, 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 love it if we won. <laughs> uh, honestly, then, I'll, I'll prefer Madrid winning at least so we can have some title race. <laughs> I thought you were my friend, guy. <laughs> I know. Yeah, uh, I, I, yeah but it is that a loss coming before the international break is going to be so painful because you know when you lose, you just want to play the next game and get that loss out of your system. Yeah. I won't have it for two weeks and <laughs> instead we'll be worrying whether Pedri is going to get injured playing for Luis Tela Fuente. Pedri got yeah. called up again? I'm I'm hoping not. <laughs> yeah, they should have called him up. I, like I I don't get I don't get it with international teams where it's like a player just recovers from injury and you're like, Oh, you should play for a national team, like come on. I mean he should call on Sufati. <laughs> I don't mean it in a bad way. I mean it like if he can get his confidence I've seen it happen with Rashford many times. Like he has a poor moment in my United, goes plays well for England. Even if it's against him now, comes back and is banging from like from the guy needs confidence. The guy needs all the confidence he can get now. Yeah, I read it. Yeah, book. just don't call up Pedri. <laughs> don't even call up Gavi. <laughs> Yeah, but, but based on his, like, Luis de la Fuente's team, like, we, we'll discuss it more in depth next week, but, like, it seems like he's going to call up more of the, like, La Liga ballers <laughs> that, that we like. Yeah. Good for La Liga fans, then. Yeah, but before we move on from Real Madrid, how do you see them against Liverpool? Do you think Liverpool have a chance of coming back, or do you think Real Madrid, with their experience, they're just going to see this through? <laughs> I know Liverpool beats my United 7-0 recently, <laughs> so it, it's statistically possible to come back. You know what? I think Liverpool will give Real Madrid a scare, but Real Madrid will remontada with the, they'll do, it'll basically be like Chelsea next season. If it, <laughs> if it gets that bad, but I think that's the worst it will get. Yeah, like, like I remember when it played, I think it was the Schalke 04 and Almost them out. Yeah, that was 14, yeah. 15. Casillas, yeah. Casillas disaster class. But yeah, I think Real Madrid have this in the back. The worst thing that will happen is a slight scare. Yeah. And then they just take care of everything like they usually do. Yeah, yeah. Well, moving on to the other side. We didn't talk about Espanol. Oh, just okay. kidding. <laughs> Let's move uh, on. Okay. <laughs> I, I, okay. You, you spot my transition, but do you have any words for Espanol? <laughs> Mm. Also, this uh, I mean, I don't know. I feel they're a better team without him. Without him, mm. even though it's good, like the goal he scored was like really the goal he scored. Good. But I feel like over when they play, he's the kind of player that when he's on the pitch, you have to play to his strength. But I don't think playing to his strength is the best team for Espanol. Yeah, that's I, just I, how I see it. I'm gonna give you a question. Who has the most non-penalty goals after Robert Lewandowski in La Liga? Morata. Yeah, Alvaro Morata. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because it gets criticized and people who bring up the likes of NSG now, who's, who I think is a very fine player, who, or Bora Iglesias, even... Actually, Aspas is tied with him, but like mm-hmm. even like these players, like even Benzema, he has less non-penalty goals than Alvaro Morata, which mm-hmm. is crazy. And he came off the bench today and he scored a, scored a good goal, um, well taken goal to like, give Atleti the lead. I, I'm not sure, but I don't think they've... I don't think I've seen them win it at Montalivi before. <laughs> no, they aren't. They've not won at Montalivi yeah. before in the league. And, and they're, they're in such a fine vein of form uh, since the World Cup. I think in their last nine games, they're, they're defeated in nine games. It's... It's crazy. Like we keep on talking about this resurgence, but I guess for them it's a pity that, or not for you, obviously, but it's a pity that they're so far behind Real Madrid and Barcelona at this stage of the season. Yeah, but at the same time, I feel like when you build good momentum in the second half of the season, it can bode well for you for the start of the next season, as long as you don't, you know, do something stupid in the transfer window. So I think with what they have now, if they add some of their loan players that have been doing well, they'll have a very good team next year. And what do you think has made that change, like in terms of looking at it tactically from Atletico before the World Cup and after the World Cup? I don't think tactically they've done too much different. Simeone still bounces between 
formations. I feel like the players themselves have just stepped up and started respecting them, their, themselves by putting in good performances because the performances they were putting before the break were largely disrespectful to their own talent. It has also helped that, you know, any potential, because we don't know what goes on in the dressing room, but any bad blood in the dressing room seems to have gone. Yeah, so, <laughs> with the two, with the Portuguese-speaking players. <laughs> yeah, so all, all that put together, I think, you know, it's no surprise that they're doing as well as they are now. Yeah. You know, at the start of the season, I made a bet with a friend or two friends. Um, I told them Alvaro Morata might be the top scorer in La Liga. <laughs> I looked very stupid at some point, but it's not looking so stupid now. Maybe if he keeps if he keeps this form going on. Yeah, maybe. I mean, definitely has a good chance for Zaire. <laughs> yeah, because Robin Lewandowski has dried up so far. So yeah, <laughs> but with the pole, you know, at any point he can just like start scoring goals. So hopefully on Sunday. <laughs> 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 yeah, and and a word on Girona, like uh, they the the games are usually exciting, but they had to be subjected to the dull one zero game today. Yeah, unfortunately, Albert made a couple of smart stops from them. I think th- this is their second or third loss in a row. Wow, because yeah, they're they're kind of funny because you know these re- relegation races, you win two games, you think you're safe, and then you lose two, and then. Yeah, you're back in. I think that's just happened to them now. Yeah, and, and the thing with Girona though is that for next week they go away to Rio. Rio, they're not in good form. Like they're already somewhat on the beach, so maybe it might be a good thing. But they don't travel well, and if they lose that game, and you have the likes of uh, Petafe, Almeria winning, it's they're they're right back in. It. It's like three points. <laughs> yeah. Well, it depends on those teams winning, to be honest. True. <laughs> It really does. And when we get back, when we get to Cadiz, I'll tell you the reason why I don't think Cadiz will win many games recently. <laughs> but we're mm-hmm. going to talk about Mallorca. They're another team where they're, we thought they were safe, but they're six points out of the relegation zone. Um, they, they see, they're still keeping their strong form going at home. The team I'll talk about is Ralph Sociedad because their form has been terrible so far. And in Europe, uh, they, they got beaten by Roma. So they're, it's very tight for them to qualify for the next round. Yeah, especially with the two goal deficits, and then in the league, they've really, really dried up. They, um, you know how they have a slump in November. You know, yeah, that, they didn't play in November, so they had to find another month for it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's crazy because they were. Three points behind Real Madrid at some points of the season. Yeah, and and even after Real Madrid had that game in hand, there was like four points behind them, and now they're fourteen points. No, I'm sorry, eleven points behind Real Madrid. Life comes at you fast sometimes. <laughs> you know, I I was like, they were a sure guarantee for top three, not even top four, and now, yeah, um, I think Atleti have opened up a five points gap. Sorry, three point gap. Yeah, I don't see that gap closing even if. Real Sociedad get they they are likely going to get knocked out of Europe. So even if they focus on Glick, I don't see that gap decreasing too much. Yeah, because both teams are going in opposite directions. Yeah, they really are. I I guess the good news for them is that the next opponents are Elche. So, but you never know. Elche. Well, Elche El- El- did surprise my Elche the week before. Sure. <laughs> I, so, well, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, who knows? Well, it will not shock me if they fumble against El <laughs> That would not be disastrous. Maybe Villarreal might get back into the Champions League race at that point. And speaking of Villarreal, they it was their centenary hundred years. Congratulations to Villarreal. They're, honestly, it's crazy when you think about the size of the club and what mm-hmm. they've done in world football. I don't think I think the fact that we we've normalized them as a European contender just shows the level of work that has gone into the level of like imagination that Fernando Rodgers has brought into the club because this is a club based on the size of the city the size of the town that they're in and the stadium they should be somewhere in the third or second division but we're here we are speaking about them and it's such a pity that they're seven points behind Rasa Sudad and they can't get into the Champions League <laughs> yeah I mean Villarreal have been 
more inconsistent all season. But we also said that just joining them in inconsistency mm-hmm. now. Maybe that um, race is not just over yet. Yeah, maybe. Well, I I see it harder for Villarreal to catch Betis though because Betis have a, I think is it four, it's more than four, yeah, more than four points gap plus yeah. head to head advantage. Yeah, yeah, Betis have the head side, which is hard, and and for Villarreal they 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 didn't get a good results in Belgium. Uh, they tied one one with Anderlecht, but. I'll say their chances of advancing are much better than Betis, who <laughs> really got torn apart in Old Trafford in the second half. In the first half, I was like, I, I was, I was like, yeah, things could go well for them, but in the second half, they were awful. And I think you can point that at the Brazilians. I also question Pellegrini's lineup because why is yeah. he playing Old Man Joaquin <laughs> against the Manchester United? That's so informed and that's like desperate for blood after their big loss and. Luis Enrique and um, I forget his name Abner didn't spread themselves in glory. They had they had awful performances, in my opinion. You know, once I saw that lineup, I didn't even bother watching. I'm like, <laughs> really, man? No Borja too. Well, yeah. maybe, I don't know if Borja was a fitness team, but still, you know, like there's a reason why he like he like works well with one me. Like one me and I as a pair is like too similar to work that well together, even though. As a pair of Scott. Yeah. But still, I feel like the lineup he used against Real Madrid was the blueprint to use against my United away from home. Yeah. And, and I, I hate this, like, because I hate it when, like, a lot of fans give this excuse. Um, do you think he had his eye on, like, he just maybe felt the United game was beyond him and he, was, uh, he had his eye on this game? Well, if that's the case, they failed to win this game so Yeah. Mm-hmm. It begs the question why it like makes his decisions even more stupid. Yeah, it, it because that's just the word. Yeah, it reminds I don't justify. I cannot just. I love. I love working, but I cannot justify him starting in European game. Yeah, that's like against a team that he barely starts in the league against Elche or something. <laughs> I don't mean. Disrespectful, but El and my United are in two different worlds. Yeah. yeah, just a strange decision. Yeah, very strange. Reminds me of that time when I, I think Mallorca still had, um, with, I think Luis Garcia Plaza was the coach, and he just rotated the entire team against Real Madrid. Uh, yeah, and lost 6 1. Oh, God, that, that was so annoying. That was so, so annoying. But yeah, like uh, for Betis, like they. They're still three points behind the Real Sociedad. They have, if they beat Real Sociedad, they would have the head-to-head advantage. That game is in a month, and that would be a super exciting game to watch. Yeah, and given the likelihood that two of them are going to be out of Europe, then it means they'll both put their all into getting fourth spot. Villarreal, you would think they should win at home against Anderlecht like, and continue to advance in the competition that I think they're I thought they were favorites for until they got Setien and sold Rui so I don't know yes and you were right about um Reina because like all these he's, old he's, men yeah yeah he's going in the blueprint of Manolo and <laughs> the mistake he made for the goal is like laughable yeah and then you think what's the alternative in Jorgensen, who's apparent, who's like um, a ghost? <laughs> yeah, they've they've not planned very well for for this. Not at yeah. all. For, but, for, 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 yeah, for a club like Villarreal, who are known for planning well, this yeah. doesn't look good. Yeah, it doesn't. But next next summer they might get Conan Ledesma, who's like a very very good goalkeeper. If <laughs> if his suspension isn't. Super huge. <laughs> but, Suspension, what happened? Yeah, we'll, we'll get we'll get there. We'll get there. I'm just teasing the viewers a bit. Uh, or listeners. Uh, yeah, but, one more thing about Villarreal. I really enjoyed the performance of Terrat. Oh, yeah. 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 He's guess. the kind of player that I'm like, this is what I want to see in La Liga. Young players be showing adventure, not these old guys still <laughs> hanging around for a paycheck. But, but you know, I feel we're, we're starting to see a lot of them, a lot of these young players, because like mm-hmm. Eratz is there, Bayern is there, and Athletic, you have Sunset, and Celta, there's Vega. So that's something that I've really liked this mm-hmm. season. Mm-hmm. More I, power to them, man. 
Yeah, because two two seasons in the past, like it's all about veterans and like thirteen <laughs> year old men like Kasin Vohra. No offense, yeah. Rob, y'all, you're you're so good. I still think you're attractive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of old men, Iago Aspas, he he made a milestone. He's the eighth, I think, top scorer in La Liga's history. So that's that's pretty impressive for them. And yeah. Salter, they keep on going from strength to strength. Yeah. Under, I saw a stat that under Cordet this season, in 10 games, they they conceded 24 goals. In in like it's, in slightly more games under Carvalho, they conceded only 13, and they've scored a lot more. So that really, that really shows how much this team has grown yeah. since the World Cup. Yeah, one of those teams, eh? But mm-hmm. do, you think, do you think they should push for a seventh, given Athletic is not in good form? Um, Mallorca, we don't think are are going to maintain it. Osasuna, maybe they might be distracted by Copa del Rey. Rayo, I, I think they're already on the beach. So I, I feel Celta have a chance if they could be in this one. You can say that, but they can lose their next game and they were looking. They're looking over <laughs> the show. Like man, no one, no one. Honestly, you're not letting club are looking yeah. kind of spooky. <laughs> hey, like, like if they lose to Vida, they have to club there. They're in trouble too. <laughs> Honestly, if you don't have, if you don't have thirty five, <laughs> you'd be like, "Yes, I be <laughs> Like, well, you need to hit forty points to be to start thinking about what's up yeah. instead of what's down. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But if Celta can get to Europe, I think that'll be great for the club. Yeah, and. Say a few words about poor Barry Aspas or good Barry Aspas because oh, yeah. he's he, he's a legend in this club and he's a legend in La Liga and you you suffered many times from of oh, course <laughs> yeah I mean it's been I don't know honestly I I know I said get rid of the old players but he's one I'd like to keep around for <laughs> a long time like he keeps growing from strength to strength every season yeah I I feel like because people remember that corner kick. At Liverpool, people outside of Spain and their team too much. But I feel he's probably one of those players that when he retires, people will realize just how special he was, especially yeah. for Celta. Yeah, and, and the thing is, there are lots of players who they do better at a smaller club, quote unquote, mm-hmm. smaller club than a big club. And I feel sometimes because of how football has changed and we tend to think of like football as these 12, 15 super clubs and nothing exists outside of that. Exactly. Exactly. Appreciate players like him. Like in the past, there was like Matt Letizia, um I'm mm-hmm. sure did really well for Newcastle, which isn't like a huge club in the UK and Blackburn. So, and and there are other examples like in La Liga and elsewhere. And I, I feel that's something that with Aspas, like we're really going to cherish because he's a guy who's he's left the club. He's won a Europa League before. <laughs> um, he's come back and he's really been. The driving force for Salta has saved them numerous times. Mm-hmm. I remember in the 17 18 season and or 18 19 season, yeah, it was that, 18, 19. that game against Villarreal where he scored a hat trick and like he was close to tears. And you just think about without without him, Salta wouldn't be where they are today. And like you look at Salta, they're a club that's fairly financially stable compared to what we see going on around in the league. And they're building like the stadium keeps on getting better and better in terms of you see the stands coming in and you can see that yeah. they're going to have a really nice stadium soon. And yeah. you can play that a lot of at the hands of Diego Aspas because he's kept them in the league for a sufficient amount of time for them to grow. Yeah. And long way continue, honestly. And yeah. as for him bothering Barcelona again, I think by the <laughs> time we play Celta, hopefully this does you not know, come back to bite me, know, but. No. You would hope that the league is wrapped up for long before them, but yeah. <laughs> who knows? Who knows anymore? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy because I, I think Real Madrid have to play Girona close to the end of La Liga and Barca have to go to Celta. <laughs> so I wonder if that's going to make make a twist in the league, but at the moment it doesn't look like it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Celta are doing really well. They should, contrary to what you're thinking about them getting seventh, I think. Worry about what's below you until you get 40 points. Once you get 40, hell, even 40 points might not be enough anymore. But hey, if you get seventh, that's great. I feel like we're there 
relatively risky transfer window where they relied on a lot of youth. We thought it was kind of a, an unwise decision before, but it's paying off now. It's not just Gabri Vega too. Um, I see Carlos Perez is doing well. Um, look at the other is doing really, really well too. Yeah. Even my boy uh, Strand Larson is doing okay. Yeah, Strand Larson is doing okay too. Seferovic has scored a goal or two since coming in. So, yeah. so they're, they're looking really good now. Yeah, they're, they're, they're looking really good. Valencia, I can say, are looking very good because it's the second win in a row in Mestalla, like second clean sheet against uh, Osasuna. I'm sorry, against the Basque team. It's, I didn't have much <laughs> hope when Baraja came in, but like it, Valencia, they're back to being a solid team, I'll say. Not mm-hmm. this looks like Tengatusa because I thought he did a lot of good things there, but the one mm-hmm. thing the team was missing was that, um, I'll say that, uh, crunch mentality when things got tough, and mm-hmm. they really showed that in this game. I was really happy for Justin Cliver to score a really good goal. Um, Lino came on and he gave the assist. But the one thing about this game, I would say, is that the referees were were kind of poor. Like the referee was kind of poor. Like he sent up two Osasuna players for something that wasn't even a red card. <laughs> yeah, the referee had to go to VAR three times because his dopey, dopey, dopey style of refereeing was just so bad. <laughs> Honestly, I'm glad I I'm I'm glad I saw this game in highlights. If I actually watched this game and saw this guy this referee just messing up life, I might have broken something. <laughs> I am not a Valencia or Sasuna fan. It just tells you how frustrating these old men are. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, Jacobo Sassi was right in that it's like how can you send up Sergio Herrera for a perfectly beautiful tackle? The penalty that Valencia got, like if you're not gonna give the one that Valencia didn't get, you don't give the penalty that Valencia got. So it's it's like the referees in this league sometimes. Let me hear it spin around. Sometimes or all the time. All the time. Every it's it's every week. This every week, yeah. like we there's a referee controversy. We're gonna talk about one coming up uh soon. But like every week there's something He's been there. teasing this one since <laughs> so much that I feel I don't even know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen all the goals this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, but like, like I'll say from Valencia's point of view, like this feels very good. Um, that at least we're winning at home. Um, if we can get a point to, at Atleti, which would be compared to votes, that would be more powerful. Oh yeah, that's the next. Hmm. Yeah, no, that should be interesting. But but I think if you're going to survive relegation battle, you need to be strong at home and. Yeah, that's something that I'm happy Valencia is doing. It's also something that Sevilla is doing because we spoke about them last week and they were in trouble. San Paulo was in trouble, but two games at home, two wins for Sevilla, and Lamela has been key in both of them. Then they lose their last home. Oh, sorry, you're talking yeah. about the Europa. You're talking yeah, about the Europa League. League. Yeah, yeah. I forgot. I actually forgot the Europa League, <laughs> given their relegation troubles. Well, yeah. Um, no, there be you no know, great win. I feel like the reverse game was the game where we started really worrying for Sevilla this season, and yeah, it's kind of poetic, I guess, that they've had such a good comeback against their relegation rival. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I'm still saying this. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, poor San Pauli, or he was like under so much pressure this week yeah, because of the six-one, and they what he's done recently is that he's played the players. Actually, he didn't do that in on Thursday, and they suffered. But in this game, he played the players where they should be played. What a shock! Worked out. Imagine, <laughs> imagine not playing a defensive. Imagine not playing Rakitic as if as a number nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, but um, you know, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, Brian Hill. Since he came back. On loan, I think he's been pretty good and he provided a great assist for Lamela, 
who I have to say, I don't know why he took off his shirt when he was celebrating. <laughs> when he's the kind of player that loves getting character, I felt that was not wise. <laughs> no, it really was. And it's, you can get one of those situations that I think happened in Serie A. I forget the striker, but like he scored and he took off his shirt. It wasn't it? Um, Milik. It was Milik, right? Yeah, it was yeah, Milik for yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> and it gets it loud. It's one of those things where it's like. And the goal was actually. Uh, that's a VR problem for yeah. Syria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, it's only like we get to ask those problems. Mm-hmm. And now for the crunch game of the weekend that I've been te- teasing all day. And it is Cadiz versus Hetafe. And this game was wild, really wild. Even, even for La Liga referee standards, it was mm-hmm. crazy. To tell you how crazy it is, we had 10 minutes of added time, and the game ended at 106 minutes. <laughs> There was like uh, Sergio was like irate with this because his team gets the goal. Fine, Hetafe get a good penalty, then Cadiz score again, and it seems like Cadiz are going to win, right? And then there's mm-hmm. a big penalty that's that they have like at ten minutes, and it takes far like ages to to get to it. And then as you know, steps up, he scores like brilliantly. And after that, as the as the Hetafe players are celebrating, like. The Cadiz players lose their shit, and I'm sorry, we're demonetized, but they, they, lose, their, they lose their head, and it's like the fans are losing it. Like things are being thrown. The Cadiz players are getting involved with everything. Apparently, Conan Ledesma like pushes the referee. I, I think it's Hernandez Hernandez, and he pushes the referee, and and they're saying he might get suspended for four to twelve games. So four to twelve, yeah, he'll get the Ronaldo treatment. Yeah, this was this was like one of like we talk about referee controversies, but this was chaos. <laughs> Honestly, I'm still finding it difficult to wrap my hand around my head around the series of events. Like, what? Like, first of all, the penalty that Hatafe got lit. Do you think that was a penalty? I think it's one of those things where it is a penalty, but <laughs> I've seen this, I've not I've seen them like. Like, I've seen them not given, but it's one of those things where it's like, I'm not sure if I would have given it. So, but you know me, and you mm-hmm. know me in this podcast, my my standard for penalties and red cards are very high. <laughs> yeah, if Tad had his way, we wouldn't have any penalties at all. <laughs> I know red cards, everyone would be, everyone would be injured, but still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't. Is there a place I can actually watch the chaos on YouTube? Because to, like La Liga highlights barely have anything. Or pu- I want to see a referee get pushed. <laughs> I, I, no, yeah, I don't condone violence, but hey, it's, it's fun. Why, why, why not lie to ourselves here? Yeah? yeah, and it's like it's like Asselin got a red card for violent conduct. It's mm-hmm. it was. I'll say go on ESPN and watch the last like <laughs> six minutes. It's well. But, but what this means for both teams, though, it's like for Cadet, if they're without Ledesma for four games, this is the guy who's saving them. So I think that puts them in trouble. And their next game is against mm-hmm. Almeria. And um, Ruby's going to be under a lot of pressure. And I think Almeria is a decent team. So I do think they're going to beat them without Ledesma. And for Atafi, I think this is a valuable point. As a Valencia fan, I'm very happy because I'm like, both, both both teams didn't get a point, so we win. But yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. The dra- when your rivals at the bottom draw, it can only be a good team player because yeah. neither of them gained significant ground, and then you took care of your own business. Yeah, and exactly. I think they have Sevilla next, so that would be a big test for both of them because if they beat Sevilla, then it might mean they might get the headset advantage over Sevilla, and that's when. That's when, if I'm a Sevilla fan, I'll really start to worry about them. Hmm. Because it's like, it's not too bad until teams around you start getting the headset around you. Yeah. Yeah. Let's move on to the final game. There was also some controversy with this game and Elche against uh, Valladolid. And Elche, they keep on playing the spoiler. Like, they're already down, but I think they just finally remembered after that time. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way he's playing the spoiler. Yeah, that's <laughs> why I feel they're going to annoy so many teams. Because, <laughs> uh, uh, yes, every team has to play for their points and their points, but at the same time, 
you rightly feel frustrated. Why are you? What are you doing this for? There's no reason. <laughs> Especially when it's again, it's a big added time. It's like I think they got like ten minutes or something added time, and yeah. helps you get the equalizer in the nineteen ninety six minute. <laughs> Yeah, and whoever they end up with two players getting sent off and a bunch of them getting yellow carded. Yeah. But the one thing I want to... I have a problem with one of those yellow cards. It's the one for Kyle Larin where on Sofa's score it says he argued. How? Does, I, I'm pretty sure he doesn't know fluent enough Spanish to argue yet. So. Yeah, I think it's just a case where like everyone is protesting and the ref is just like giving out like cards like candy and if he's doing gestures because I, yeah. I think Hogla got sent off. Hogla got sent off for clapping of the yeah. ref. Neymar would be proud. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, it's one of those things where it's like with Spanish refs, we talk about this every week. They take things way too personally. Like if a mm-hmm. player is protesting and is clapping, like as a ref, just just let things go. You know, you know it's a heat set environment mm-hmm. and I think this is where the refs need to work on their anger management because it's heated. They need to be the, the voice of reason in that situation. Yeah. You can call them aside and you can have a, a talk with them and you can like any more of this and you're out. You're out. You're going to the streets. But man, I, I think we're going to have this conversation every week from now. On. Unfortunately. Sure. And with that, that's that's it for La Liga so far. But the Champions League is still going on. Um, I'm going to run through some of the games and you're going to tell me how they're going to go. And let's start with Inter versus Porto, or Porto versus Inter. Do you think Porto have a chance to go to, to going through? Yeah, of course they have a chance. They're at home in, uh, in Europe. Inter haven't been great all the time since, um, I almost said since lockdown, <laughs> <laughs> since the World Cup. I can see, I, I can see Porto doing something here. Mm. Maybe taking this to extra time and possibly winning it there, or even winning in normal time. Yeah, I think it'll be six out of two Portuguese teams in the quarterfinals of the Champions. Yeah, it was really good. The bad the old days when <laughs> it wasn't the whole competition was going to rigged for the more wealthy guys, and you have like more diversity. But hey, one day we'll get there. Yeah, one day we'll get there. And in terms of this plastic derby, we have City against Leipzig. Uh, <laughs> City, they, they, they. they their form is all over the place sometimes, right? Because sometimes they're they're winning and we think they're back to their best. And they don't look like a vintage city, although people think that they're favorites to win it. I feel that part of me thinks this can be a weird year, yes. A weird year where City don't do well in the league, but they just get that European success. Like we've seen that kind of script happen before with Chelsea twice. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe but time. <laughs> it can happen exactly. It could even happen a third time, but God forbid. I don't know. <laughs> I can't lie. I can't lie to you when I tell you that I think Leipzig are going to get the W. Oh, wow, you think so? I I know. In fact, if Leipzig don't win, I'll do whatever you want me to do on the pod <laughs> next week. Yo, you're gonna curse all the German teams because last week you were like Borussia Dortmund is gonna go through and no. Oh no, I forgot. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, City are going to win five 0 <laughs> I, I, I reversed it. Yeah, but to be honest, German fans won't mind me cursing Leipzig. Sure, but they won't mind you cursing Eintracht Frankfurt, who they look like they're in the way out. Napoli should they should get the job done. Yeah, um, this feels like another Benfica club because situation, except Frankfurt actually have a competent coach. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, think well, that's... going off, I've not watched Frankfurt a lot this season, but going off last season, they seem to be a better team away from home than at home. So, yeah, maybe we shouldn't rule them out yet. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I already discussed like um, Real Madrid Liverpool. I saw a guy on his Instagram story put like a 4 0. <laughs> In the burnout with Liverpool, with Darwin Nunez taking up a shirt. <laughs> that would be so funny if that happens, but yeah, I, I, I doubt it happens. I, there's, well, like Neymar once said, 99% fit. <laughs> 1% chance, 99% fit. Yeah, but they, they, they lost 
a way to for like this weekend. Oh, did it? Yeah. A little maybe maybe a small price to pay for five dollar to pay a bit. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> like I, I would uh, as much as I love to laugh at Real Madrid, <laughs> I think this the banter La Liga is gonna be received. <laughs> Might be too uh, hard. At, at this point, I do not care what twelve-year-old children and overgrown men like <laughs> Marco, and like Marco Bridge think about anything at this point. I just want to laugh at my enemies. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? If Real Madrid escape banter on Wednesday, right? Yeah. Who was to say they won't escape it? Who was to say they will escape it on Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Watch yeah. us lose now because I jinxed us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Taps is gonna be making fun of you. Yeah. <laughs> but goes. I can confidently say one thing. What? Remember, Jid. Okay, I'll say, okay. I'll, I'll say it. Remember, Jid will never humiliate us in a scoreline like we humiliate them. Yeah, that, that is true. That is true. It's been it's been a while. It, it, they been don't they don't have that in them, man. It's just. Yeah. I think the last time they that it was like somewhat humiliating was the four two in two thousand eight, but that's like eight. Yeah, no, I thought that was a four one. Was it four one or four two? I think it was four one. Yeah. Either way, and that's not happening on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. It's it's more likely to happen the other way because I just built like that. <laughs> Oh God, yeah, man. You, you, when when they beat us five nil on Sunday, it's not going to be funny. <laughs> yeah, you created a, cl- a cloud of like. I've created a cloud. All of my friends and family that are Madrid fans are going to. <laughs> anyway, it's not going to come to that. Yeah, well, I would hope so for your for your <laughs> for my sake. <laughs> Because you know, right. you, no you, matter you, what, I'll be on the pod yeah, even if we lose. I, you know what? I, I know. I know what buttons to hit. <laughs> you know what? I said, you know me. I know what buttons to hit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But with that, uh, listeners, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast, the our serious conversation and non-serious conversation. And please give us a like, a share, and tell your friends how good we are because you know we're your favorite La Liga podcast. We know that. But thank you so much for listening and see you next week for a special classical podcast. Adios. Adios.